Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome to the Essential Guide to Audio Routing in Cubase. Today we're going to deal with group tracks. This is a concept where we take multiple tracks, we cluster them all together, and we can perform common operations on them. Volume, panning, insert effects, all sorts of different stuff. It's an absolutely essential part of our routing strategy. If you're enjoying this series, check out the Patreon and YouTube channel member links below. Great way to help support me. Okay, let's get on with it. We've got these four tracks selected. Uh, these are one, two, three, and four. Uh, let's solo them and hear what's going on. Pretty straightforward. Now, in order to do that, I needed to select track number one and then hold shift down and then select track number four. If I want to change the volumes on these tracks, I'm gonna to need to link them together in order to be able to do that kind of stuff. I wanna be able to do all of that implicitly. I want a single point of contact where I can control all four of those tracks simultaneously. That's what group tracks do. The easiest way to do it is from your lower mix console. Once you've got your tracks selected, all you have to do is right click in the lower console and say add group channel to selected channels. We'll have a bit of a chat about inputs and outputs later, but just for now I want to keep things nice and simple. And I'm gonna call this group track R sub. You can see by default it's created it the wrong color. I'm absolutely OCD about this kind of stuff. I have separate colors set up for my groups. It's a darker shade of the audio color, so you can see pink is my choice of vocal color. There's my vocal group. Now the reason I've used the word sub is a purely personal one. This is my convention. Sub describes uh, a collection of tracks that have very similar kinds of data in them. I want to treat these things as if they were one. That's what the word sub means to me. If I use the word bus when I'm creating a group, that's collecting data together that has some sort of common theme but not necessarily quite so closely linked. The third naming convention type that I have when I'm creating groups is the word master, and this describes a much more overarching concept. So let's carry on with our example with the vocals for now, and we'll see all of those things. I've just created this subgroup, and what that allows me to do is click solo on the sub itself, and it implicitly activates solo for all of the separate tracks, giving me exactly the functionality that I want. I can now go into my subgroup, change the volume, and it's gonna lower or increase the volume of all of the harmony vocals simultaneously. Can you see it's not moving the sliders of the tracks themselves, it's moving the volume of the subgroup, and that in turn is changing the volume of the overall output. Later on in this video series, we'll deal with the concept known as VCA faders. There are so many different ways to accomplish very similar tasks. What you need to do is get all of your tools in the toolbox and then figure out what the best tool is for the particular job. At the moment, we're just dealing with group tracks. Okay, brilliant. I've created my subgroup. It's collected those four different tracks together. But can you see below, we've got another five harmony tracks that are um, also ours, let's say later on in the process, right at the end of the song, when all of these other tracks are in, I want to be able to add those extra tracks to the subgroup as well. What I'm gonna to do to accomplish that, uh, that goal is to move my group track down to the bottom. I'm gonna select the four tracks that aren't currently part of that group. And I'm gonna open my mix console. This is the fastest and easiest way I find to do it. I use the mix console for large scale editing on lots of groups simultaneously. Here are the five tracks I want to add to the sub. And what you wanna make sure is that in the racks drop down in the top right hand corner, you've got routing engaged. Just turn it off. These routing options disappear if that's not there. What I can now do is link, temporarily link all of these tracks together, route them to the R sub, and then all five tracks have just been added to that subgroup. So now when I click solo on the group itself, it solos the entire R sub. And you can see all of those tracks playing. Okay, so that's a sub. Let's give you an example of what I would do if I was creating a bus. Well, everything that I'm highlighting now is the female vocals. 
Now we've got those R's, but there are four Vox vocals as well, which are different kinds of effects over the course of the song. Let's say I want to have all of that controllable by a single group, and I'm going to call this female vocal bus. But of course the R sub has already been grouped together. The nine tracks that I've just added to that sub don't need to be grouped again. So if I now want to create another group that this information is feeding into, the tracks that I want to select are the four ungrouped vocal tracks plus the sub. Now I can right click anywhere in the mix console, but I always click on the stuff that I've got highlighted. And this is gonna be female, harmony, bus. Give it the right color. And so now when I solo that, the sub contains the nine R tracks. And then we've got these four independent Vox tracks that are going in there as well. Let's have a look at that in the mix console. Here's Vox 1 to 4. All of the R tracks go into the R sub. The R sub goes into the female harmony bus. Let's make that a little bit wider so you can see it. There it is. And then finally, the female harmony bus goes off to the stereo out. There's one final female vocal track that we haven't dealt with yet, yet and that's the lead vocal itself. Let's deactivate the solo. So I've now got complete control over all the harmonies, but of course I might want to hear the primary female vocal as well. Now the highest level of hierarchy in my naming convention is the master group. So you've got subs at the bottom, buses, and then master groups. It's important to stress there is no functional difference between any of these things. It's purely a conventional thing that helps my brain figure out what's going on on these different tracks. So if I select the lead vocal track, and the female harmony bus, and then add them both to a group track called female vocal master. I know that that's everything to do with female vocals. And just to prove that that works, let's solo it. And now you can see every single female vocal has been soloed. There's the female vocal plus the harmonies underneath. Okay, that's all very well and good for the female side of things. Now we've got male harmonies to deal with, and this unfortunately is me, and I say unfortunately because I can't sing very well, but nevertheless, you know, it's a similar kind of thing. I could create subs for the ums and the us. For this particular day, I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna create a single male vocal master. It'll do us for today's purposes. And then the last link in the chain is to connect the two vocal master tracks together into one overarching vocal master. So this track here that's currently highlighted is the be all and end all for vocals. Every single vocal track is activated when I solo that track. Now, as I'm sure you can appreciate that gives you a hell of a degree of flexibility when you're uh, mixing your song. If you decide that the whole of the, the male vocal harmonies are too dominant and overriding the female side of things you can just pull the male vocal master down and you've got you've had no impact at all on the overall master level of all of the vocals together now at the moment that vocal master track is feeding directly to stereo out but i have one final uh, piece of the convention puzzle that i always use which is to introduce one extra bus and i call it the master bus what i'm going to do is i'm going to add the vocal master to a bus called Master Bus. Master Bus has its own rules. It actually lives in my in all of my songs right next to the stereo out, and I color it red. It's basically a preliminary stereo out, and it's so important to my process flow that I actually stick Master Bus right next to the stereo out. The reason for this is twofold. One, it allows me to apply effects to the Master Bus. If I'm gonna apply compression or EQ to the entire song, I'll do it on the master bus. I'll leave the stereo out absolutely completely untouched. This gives me an overall volume. If I'm talking to you, for instance, I can pull the stereo down, stereo out down and the entire song um, is affected. The only time this is ever at zero is when I'm actually outputting the final master of the song. More importantly though, when I'm composing the song, if I'm like practicing a guitar solo, I want to hear that louder than everything else. 
And so I'll create my guitar solo track. I'll route the guitar solo directly to stereo out, bypassing the entire rest of the song. And I've got control of that song from the master bus. So I can pull the master bus down, turn the stereo out up. And now the thing that I'm playing, the guitar line that I'm playing right now is much, much louder than everything else in the song. So it's just a, a really convenient way by which you can bypass the entire song's routing strategy, get straight to the outside world. What other cool stuff can we do with group tracks? Well, we can create things called down mixes. Let's say you want to do a single audio output of just the vocals. You want to go away and listen to it independently. You don't want the rest of the song. You want it in a single WAV form. Well, you can do that via the group tracks. We've got this track called Vocal Master here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create an audio track that takes an input from the vocal master. Now what I'm going to do is press record and even though you're going to hear the entire song, that's not what's being output to this track. We're only outputting the vocal line. So let's just have a listen to what we've just recorded then. So that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted just a down mix of just the vocals. I can now pick that audio file up out of my audio pool, copy it onto my phone, listen to it, whatever I want to do with it. That's just an independent audio file. Something else that we can do is create alternative group tracks that we can toggle between fairly easily. What I'm going to do is create myself a new group track. I very rarely actually create groups from the add track dialog, but you can. And I'm going to call this one Vocal Master with Saturation. And basically, I'm going to give myself an alternative routing mechanism. Instead of routing the vocals into the Vocal Master, I can alternatively route them into this extra track to which I'm going to add a distortion effect. And the way that I'm going to do that is via the Mix Console head back up into my racks section, and this time I'm gonna activate direct routing. What that basically does is renders this top routing section redundant. You could take it away. I'll leave it there for now, it's not doing any harm. But when we open the direct routing section now, you can see at the moment, there's a one-for-one -one equivalence between all of these tracks. But if we head over to our vocal section, female vocal master and male vocal master are both feeding into the vocal master track. Well, there's an easy way I can quickly route them somewhere else. I can create myself a second alternative output destination, vocal master with saturation. And you can see because I've got Q-Link engaged, it's, give, it's added that option to both tracks simultaneously. Let's turn Q-Link off. And now whichever one of these tracks I select, that's where the vocals are gonna go. So if I select the saturated track for both of those options and solo it, There's the distortion. We hearken to the call. It's obviously pretty violent. Sorry, I just need to unmute Vocal Master in order to be able to toggle between these two things. There's the clean version. So there's female vocals being rooted to the, dis to the saturated track. And the male vocals are still going to the clean track. Now I could alternatively route both of those groups to both the saturated and the clean track simultaneously. This is a process called summing. If I right click on the word direct and engage summing mode for each of those two tracks, I can now route to both tracks simultaneously. You're going to get the clean version and the saturated version which is going to double the volume because both of those outputs are going to both group tracks. Of the and that'll do us for today. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please hit the like button and I'll see you for the next one. Thanks very much for watching.